This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 687. The relationship is a changing. The benefits achieved when partners change together. By Dr. Gary Lundowski of loves.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to ORD. I am your host, Greg Audino, and I am here every Monday to Friday to narrate some of the best relationship content we can find for you online. I share relationship tips that cover parenting, dating, breakup recovery, and way more so as to equip you as much as possible in each of your important relationships. Naturally, I am sure there are some ways in which you'd like your partner to change. Natural. But uh, have you thought about how changing together can lead to good things? Let's hear it today from Dr. Gary and start optimizing your life. The Relationship is a Changin'. The Benefits Achieved When Partners Change Together by Dr. Gary Lundowski of Loves.com There is a well-worn saying, often mistakenly attributed to Albert Einstein, suggesting women marry men hoping they will change, men marry women hoping they will not. This statement may or may not be true, but highlights an interesting and understudied relationship dynamic. Change plays an important role in relationships. It is natural to wonder how long your relationship will last, whether you will fall out of love, whether you'll have children and what they'll be like, how your partner will be as a parent, whether you'll get a divorce, etc. The common denominator in each of these inquiries is that you and your partner will experience your fair share of change along the way. But is this change good? On the one hand, change is an opportunity for growth, but change also threatens stability. Partners may also anticipate or experience different rates of change. Will both partners change in tandem or experience change differently? To address these issues, researchers Anika Cloutier, Queen's University, and Joanna Peetz, Carleton University, conducted two studies designed to examine how anticipated changes in the self and one's partner influence views of their relationship. In study one, a sample of 183 adults from North America, average age 37.5 years, most of whom, 62%, were married, were asked to anticipate general changes in themselves and their partner by placing anticipated change into the following categories. Congruent, both my partner and I will change. Incongruent, I will change, but my partner will stay relatively the same. And staying the same both my partner and I will stay relatively the same. Participants also completed measures of anticipated change. Do you feel as though you or your partner will change as a person from now to one year from now? Current relationship satisfaction, in general, how satisfied are you with your relationship? Current growth slash self-expansion, how much do you see your partner as a way to expand your own capabilities? And current stability, How stable feels consistent through time is your relationship right now. In study one, 46% of participants expected no change, whereas 37% anticipated congruent change, with the remaining 18% anticipating incongruent change. Participants expecting congruent or no change also reported higher personal growth, stability, and relationship quality compared to those who anticipated incongruent change. Analyses that focused on the anticipated degree of change, i.e. not just whether there would be change, but how much change they expected, revealed that partners were less satisfied with their relationships when they thought their partner was going to change a lot, while they themselves were not going to change at all. In study two, the researchers focused more on the nature of anticipated changes with data from 175 North American adults, average age 37 years, half of whom were married. Measures paralleled those in study one, with a few notable exceptions. The category measure was refined to include five instead of three categories. Congruent and no change remained the same, with incongruent change divided into three possibilities. Both my partner and I will change in different directions. I will change, but my partner will stay relatively the same. And my partner will change, but I will stay relatively the same. Incongruent change. Further, a different measure of relationship quality that assessed trust, passion, commitment, intimacy, love, and satisfaction was employed, and stability and growth measures were also modified to focus on future anticipated changes versus current changes as they had done for relationship quality in Study 1. In contrast to Study 1, 
This time, roughly 44% of participants expected congruent change, whereas 30% anticipated incongruent change in one of the three forms tested, with the remaining 26% anticipating no change. Consistent with study one, when participants anticipated congruent change, they reported higher future relationship quality, stability, and personal growth compared to those who anticipated incongruent change. Overall, these results suggest that the best relationships are those where people expect they will change in similar ways as their partner. When participants anticipated change only in themselves, or only in their partners, it was not associated with relationship outcomes. Rather, the key factor that seems to influence participants' appraisals of their relationship was whether both partners were thought to be in sync. It isn't clear whether the benefit is from both partners being in sync or that being out of sync is just really detrimental. After all, thinking your partner is going to change while believing that you won't may make you feel like you're being left behind. Similarly, thinking your change is going to outpace your partner's could lead to believing that you are outgrowing the relationship. First, it is important to realize that this research focuses on anticipated change, not actual change. In addition, it focuses on change in general, without exploring the exact nature of those changes. Future research will need to explore whether some changes, e.g. personality, are more consequential than other changes, e.g. getting a new job. The research also did not directly address whether changes were positive or negative. It will be important to examine this because events themselves, e.g. a new job, can result in a mixture of positive and negative changes, e.g. more responsibility and prestige, which is positive, but less time with the partner, which is negative. Partners may both change a lot or hardly at all. Regardless of the rates of change or the nature of it, these studies indicate that as long as partners change in the same way, it bodes well for the relationship. You just listened to the post titled, The Relationship is a Changin', The Benefits Achieved When Partners Change Together, by Dr. Gary Lundowski of Loves.com. Now, if you have a child, grandchild, little cousin, or nieces and nephews learning at home, listen up. You might think it's impossible to get a kid to put down their mobile device. So let's talk about KiwiCo real quick. KiwiCo is a science and art subscription box for kids that lets them learn and play through real and hands-on projects. So I got what's called the Koala Crate for one of my friend's toddlers. I have to say the projects are just ridiculously cute. Examples include a fishing pole to catch all sorts of these felt sea creatures, or uh, decorating a teddy bear backpack as part of a camping project is another one. There's even a magazine in the crate which provides these really engaging stories and games alongside the project. So watch your child's confidence grow as they develop creative thinking skills from building the projects through KiwiCo. Learn about individual projects from the KiwiCo store if you don't want to commit to a whole subscription. KiwiCo is redefining play with hands-on projects that build confidence, creativity, and critical thinking skills. There's something for every kid or kid at heart at KiwiCo. Get your first month free on select crates at kiwico.com slash ORD. That's K-I-W-I-C-O dot com slash O-R-D. And a super informative article by Dr. Gary today. You know, love and really any feelings that come with relationships can be so hard to measure. And of course, each relationship is unique. So I always find particular value in these kinds of figures and studies that can put structure to them in a way. Maybe it's just me, but some very interesting takeaways from the studies he shared with us today. And I thank him for that, and will certainly keep them in mind within my own relationships. Now, let us sign off on today's episode. Thank you so much for joining me here once again, everyone. I will be back with a post on how to negotiate skillfully without burning bridges. So I'll see you tomorrow, where your optimal life awaits.